Welcome back to the Squarespace Entrepreneur Podcast. If you are creating products or services for the users of this platform, then this show is for you. My name is Omari Harabin. I'm the founder of sqspthemes.com. And today we're talking with Krishna Solanke of Krishna Solanke Designs about how she has transitioned from a freelance uh, lifestyle business model to more of an agency collective model. Um, without any further ado, let's get into our conversation. Awesome. Thank you so much, firstly, for having me on the podcast. It, um, it's a pleasure to be here, and especially to all your audience as well. So I am Krishna from Krishna Solanke Designs, very uniquely named, as you can tell. Um, we are a branding and Squarespace website design agency, mainly focused to SMEs, small businesses and agencies. We're based out in Cambridge in the UK, and we've been doing this for about three years full time. Other than that, it was six years, seven years part time. So we've kind of transitioned from being just me on my own and a freelance um, model, so to speak, mm-hmm. working like as a lifestyle business to transitioning to actually turning this into a small and mighty agency. So, yeah. So was was did you always have like agency goals and aspirations or was it something that you discovered along the way? It's something I've discovered along the way. So my background is design anyway. I've always been into website development and design, website design. Um, And then over the years, as I kind of set up my own portfolio, created my own business on the side, I realized, you know, I haven't got any agency experience. I don't have that degree specialized focused um background so everything i'm learning is learning that i've done like self-development on my own um Mm. no agencies would hire me at the time so i was like okay well i've got to do something about this because i really enjoy design and development um can't get that agency experience because obviously i think they wanted that requirement where you know your background is specialized in something you've got a portfolio as soon as you come out of university mm-hmm. um, and because I didn't have that it was really difficult and the only reason I wanted to go into the agency world was because the variety of design work that can hit the desk right. it's very different very fast paced um, and I used, I used to think that I would thrive in that environment so I thought well let's let's try and get in there obviously it didn't happen so setting up the business and then realizing that you know, lifestyle changes as I settled down and wanted to have a family as well, couldn't grow the career ladder. So I was like, right, it just seems perfect time to kind of take this freelance business into a little bit more seriously. Let's take it into full-time business mode. Um, Did that and then realized that, you know, my clients really love working with me. I was getting lots of work coming through, through referrals and recommendations and it just started to grow slowly, slowly. And then from that, I realized I've got so much work to do. I need to take extra people on and try and grow and scale because it just made sense. Mm-hmm. Um, and actually at that point I was fully booked six months in advance and I was, I was kind of just scrambling every old ungodly hour trying to do all the things wearing all the hats. So right. I was like, right, if I get the people on, we can kind of do this together and see how, see what happens essentially. And yeah, that's what's happened over, over time. And that's where we are now. <laughs> so, so when, when it was just a part-time thing, what was the full-time thing? The full-time thing was also design. I was a designer oh, okay. in-house at, um, at a, just a local business, um, oh. but it was a variety of things. It wasn't just specialised in in website design. I used to do branding, I used to do mobile app design, I used to do print, collateral, everything, all elements of design, mm-hmm. but my core was website design. Um, and it, because of that, and not knowing that I could work, you know, the ungodly hours, I'd come back and be like, I just want to do more design work. I really focused myself on website design, set up mm. the business, and basically had the website on WordPress, mm. realized that I can't live in the back end of the WordPress site because that's not how I want to function. Yeah. And then this was about eight years ago, nine years ago, and I found Squarespace at the time. And in the UK, very, it wasn't, I wouldn't say it wasn't well known, but it wasn't as popular as it is now. Mm. And so what I found was like a, a lot of the tutorials, a lot of the advice or whatever I was learning was predominantly US based. So I was kind mm. of learning everything from the US and bringing it over and implementing it into my own business and doing that on the side. So going to work, mm. coming home, setting up the business. Um, and I loved it. I thought the Squarespace was brilliant. So I thought if in two weeks, if I'm you know working ungodly hours, coming home, looking after a newborn, and kind of setting up the business and I've managed to you know design the site 
build the site, optimize it, mm-hmm. written out a blog post and changed it. And back then it was on seven. So I'd, mm-hmm. I'd redone it all in a different template as well, all in two weeks in the ungodly hours. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure someone out there is going to need these services who doesn't want to do this in the ungodly hour themselves mm-hmm. or doesn't have, right. have, you know, that capability. So I was like, let's see if this works. And slowly, slowly, I started building up my network of local businesses here in Cambridge. Mm-hmm. Um, and I realized that there were there were a lot of people who were in my position who could do with that help. So mm-hmm. I started taking the work on. Um, luckily, one of my now very close friends recommended me to an agency owner who was on Squarespace. And again, there were few and far between in the UK. There's not that many of us, especially in, in yeah. Cambridge. And so I took that job on and it's just flourished since then. So, yeah. Wow. You know, I never I never thought about like Squarespace as a platform, like how it's received internationally, um, like the the kind of evolution over time. I've only kind of thought about it in snapshots. But like, you know, I remember when Squarespace wasn't as popular over here yeah. either. Um, but I never thought about the fact that like, oh, yeah, there there's that simultaneous kind of a like onboarding of a market kind of, so to speak. Yeah. Um, what I mean- what? Yeah, go ahead. No, I mean, there's the same kind of kind of concept here as well. So when I'd mentioned Squarespace to anyone, no one kind of thought anything of it. Like yeah. in my local network of the businesses, they all were like very, very, very focused on WordPress. And even at the time with commerce, with Shopify, that was quite a big focus as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so trying to say like, you know, I've niched and I've specifically niched into Squarespace it's more of an education. I was teaching them along alongside trying to say that this is a really great platform. It's a really mm. great tool. Um, and that was obviously pre-pandemic. Since right. then, obviously the pandemic kicked in and Squarespace have done an immense amount of like marketing and international marketing in that themselves as well. Mm. And I think that that's helped um, recognition over in the UK and probably even outside of the US. It's, it's just business has boomed because of that. And I think, right. again, coming down to like, educating the people who are in my network and who are using it in the UK, they don't even know some of the, the capabilities that Squarespace is now very like right. offering and they, that they do. So it's a continuous, I learn it, I share it, they learn it, we can implement together situation. So, yeah. Yeah, no, that's awesome. Um, so, you know, we, we spoke briefly a moment ago about how you've recently expanded the team. Um, Tell me a little bit more about that and kind of what prompted, I mean, obviously you needed to, (laughs) but like kind of what what prompted that and and how were you able to uh, adjust or make that transition to to grow? I'll be really honest. I found it and I'm still finding it very, I wouldn't say challenging. I find it really interesting because there are a lot of designers, developers out there and with the work we do, I'm very heavily focused on making sure we can do it the right way rather than almost winging it when it comes to website design. There's that user experience, that user journey that I always believe you have to kind of create and you have to understand and do the research behind each and every website. Mm-hmm. And for me, it's key finding the right developers, finding the right designers to make sure that they are on the same page as me because Personally, I'm a very focused, I'm very process-driven and systems-driven designer developer. Mm-hmm. Um, and I say designer developer because I've I've done the design work, but I also do speak development. So I can kind of see both sides of that story. And I, right. I heavily do think they, they do need to kind of meet in the middle. You can't just lead on design and then run with development on its own. They do need to kind of talk to each other. Um, and actually, when I was looking for help, it was it was more a case of I want to find the right people and I want to see if they've got the right vision and see if they would fit into the vision I've got more so than just finding anyone who's going to be able to do the development work. Yeah. Um, and that's really important to me because I do believe in there's a there's a level of transparency, there's a level of communication and the values that we have as part of the agency that I'm I've kind of set up. Mm-hmm. And I, I'd like those people to kind of buy into that and understand what we're trying to do together as a team, more so than I'm leading and you kind of just follow. Because I think yeah. that they bring on different experiences and they bring on different skill sets in they in a different view. So that's really important in you know having that initial conversation, talking to them about what they what their setup is. I mean, some of them are full-time working and they want to do like design development on the side mm-hmm. and they're learning. So it's turned into almost like a I'm mentoring them into 
building something that will be beneficial for them but also for me and they see mm -hmm. they see the benefit in that yeah. um and they see the vision so it makes it easier for them to come on board others are a little bit more relaxed in that they don't really want to be involved as heavily as on every single project they don't need the mentoring but they're happy to help as and when i need that help so it's just mm -hmm. a case of me reaching out and saying hi you know i've got this massive project on can you take on some elements of it? What elements would you like to take on? And we kind of split that task. Yeah. Um, and I like to give them the freedom as well, because for me, when I found that I was setting up the business or working um, part time trying to set up business, and I felt that like I was very restricted because I was also working as a designer. Um, and I felt that it was very important to, if I'm going to set something up, that I want to give the people who I'm working with the opportunity to have that freedom as well. So that mm -hmm. they're able to kind of work when they want to give them the autonomy to be able to make decisions themselves, let them lead in their own way, because I think people thrive when they're given that kind of that freedom mm -hmm. and that makes it a better team for everyone who's involved. Yeah. So yeah, I yeah. mean, finding them, finding them, it's mainly come out of my network. If I'm honest, it's like just mm -hmm. working with, with people who I've had as clients or um, I've done a couple of courses ages ago, really, really ages ago, one or two people I've just managed to somehow keep in touch with. They've reached out recently and it's just, it's organically grown. I haven't put any kind of LinkedIn post, a social media post out there to say I'm growing a team and come and, you know, apply right. for this job because I don't know. I don't know if that's going to be a stable place. Um, mm -hmm. Not yet anyway. That's mm -hmm. not to say in the next six months I won't take someone on because I have been toying with the idea and I have been trying to put those place blocks in place mm -hmm. um, because with me, I am an overthinker. I do like to think a little bit ahead. So if I know that I can tend to give someone that opportunity and I know that I'm stable enough to give them the opportunity and they're yeah. willing to take it, then let's make it happen kind of thing. Let's do it yeah. that way. Um, but yeah, I need to make sure that all the risk element is kind of securely... <laughs> of course you know, you sort of rather than just jumping and thinking we'll we'll be able to work it out as we go along so yeah, yeah. no it sounds like you've put together or a, a collective of sorts um with shared values uh yeah. and 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 figured out you know working styles that are that can work together and so on and i think that's a that's an excellent way to go about it um thank you because i after I, the last episode I had, I, I took a note, I wrote this down for myself and that is, you know, never be afraid to um, tweak or adjust your business model so that it works better for you and the people you're here to serve. Um, Cause it's, it's very easy to get locked into models and examples that might not be best suited for who we are or for, you know, the people around us. Um, so giving yourself the freedom to explore and figure it out and make it make sense like not for anyone else but just for you um yeah it sounds like your, your business is growing really well via referrals what would you say to like and this might be a silly question but like what would you say to a new designer who's kind of anxious and it's like how do I get referrals, right? Is that something I need to ask for? Is that something, is that just a result of doing good work? <clears throat> like what's your, do you have a referral strategy of how to, you know, or is it just, what, what is it for that you? Is a, that is a really good question. Um, and actually there, I think there are two ways. If you're mm -hmm. a new designer, my, 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 in my experience, what I did was actually create, create work. So I kind of, create dummy projects. I did, I, I didn't think that it was going to work to the best, but it gives you the freedom to showcase your abilities and push your own boundaries. Mm -hmm. So you've got to kind of create a dummy client, create a dummy kind of project and kind of create the designs for it, create the de development for it and create that user journey as you would put yourself in the shoes of the audience for that particular client, mm -hmm. thinking about them all the time, because with any design project, it's not about you. It's not about what you're doing as a business, it's about the audience and what they expect to see when they hit that website, when they hit that piece of design. So mm -hmm. looking at it from their perspective, what would I expect to see on this particular design? I'd create that project. I would mm -hmm. then go and design it and develop it and then publish it essentially. I'd share that this is a passion project, so to speak. Mm -hmm. I mean, I only had to do that once or twice because the network I had at the time and because I was trying to drum up business 
it was yeah. really easy to kind of say, now I've taken the jump or now I've got an available spot. If there's mm-hmm. anyone who needs my services, come on board um, and let's work together. Um, right. I wouldn't say that that's always worked either because I do believe that, that you've got to have the right kind of client fit. Not every client is going to be the perfect fit for you. I mean, for me, I'm like I said, I'm process driven. So I've got things like Asana in place. I've got project management tools. It's systems that make the whole project really streamlined Mm -hmm. now some people don't like that some people like to be a bit more relaxed and take days take weeks and do it in their own time so in that particular case we probably wouldn't be a good fit for each other because for me when you start a project there needs to be a deadline there needs to be an end date otherwise it can just keep going on and on and on yeah so not only is it a case of you know do the passion projects find that work But the other thing is also when I was very early on, I used to share a lot of articles. I'd write blog posts. I would share content for free. And Mm -hmm. I'd I'd noticed that that was drumming up business because I'm showcasing my expertise. I'm showing my trust and they began began to trust me. Mm -hmm. So essentially writing out the articles because back then I don't even think there were that many podcasts that you could kind of be on, if I'm honest. (laughs) It was just purely written content. Um, and I'd write, I'd write literally a blog post a week, and it was a consistent thing for about eighteen months. Mm. Um, on the side of writing, uh, you know, doing project work part time yeah. plus working full time as well. So it was, it was, it was challenging. But the drive yeah. in there, you've got to have the drive if you want to make this, if you want to make it work, essentially. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and coming back to like referrals and how do you drum up that business? It is. You've got to build trust, build that credibility, do those passion projects. And then I think over time, it will just evolve into into people recognizing you for a particular thing, whether that thing is, you know, you're niching into Squarespace website design for the wedding industry or your niche is just Squarespace mm-hmm. um, design or it could be creating templates. Because I know that that's quite a big thing at the moment as well, seeing that around everywhere. So being able to hone in on that niche and really kind of elevate it and work on it, I think is, is key as well. Yeah. Yeah. I love, I love that you mentioned the client fit because in my beginning as a freelance Squarespace person, (laughs) um, (laughs) I, I, my, the way my personality was set up, it was like, Oh, I could be anyone for anyone. You know, it's kind of like I could do it all kind of thing. Um, And I hadn't, it took me a really long time to really understand that I wasn't the best fit for everyone and other and clients weren't necessarily the best fit for me. Um, and that requires some self-awareness, you know, with, with, with how you work again, like I said, like how you work um, <clears throat> and then who, who that would benefit the most. So it, it's really easy to get as, especially as creative people to get stuck on yourself and how you're perceived or yeah. all of all of those things that could go on but at the end of the day in business like they don't care about you as much as they care about what they want from you um and and if you're the best person to give it to them so that blend of of self-awareness in terms of like you know how do you work what are your values and who's going to be yeah. best suited to be on the other side of that? Who's going to receive it the best and, and walk away the best? I also love your 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 mock-up example, right? Of like, you don't have to wait for the work to come. Um, no, if it's no. work that you want to do, do it. <laughs> come up with it. Absolutely. And and I- it's it like you said, it it pushes you. I remember I used to do that. I used to do that specifically as well. I would I would almost front the project myself. Yeah and be like, hey, I made this website for you. What do you think? And, you know, sometimes it worked and it got me the work and sometimes it it didn't. But at least I had, I was exercising. And I think that's really like the value of it is like, you want to exercise your skills. Um, You want to exercise your business, which is a system of of skills and processes put together um, and develop your your client routines and, you know, develop it all so that um it works <laughs> and it gets stronger yeah, and, and and on that note I think that you you've touched on a quite a few quite a few points I mean it, it was a learning curve to understand even for me that you know not every client is going to be the perfect fit for you mm-hmm. and even still so what I did early on was adopt a, a method of you know instead of just jumping in and being really excited about every inquiry or 
chasing every inquiry and saying like, I'm going to get this one and it's going to be brilliant and I'm going to turn it into something brilliant. Yeah. It was almost, almost a case of like, let's review this. Let's have that chat to initially see if we're actually going to be a good fit and let's see how you work. I'll explain to you how I work. You explain to me like, if you're happy with that, how you see things working. And then we kind of come to a, you can kind of understand from a conversation when you've had with someone, like if you're going to be a good fit, right? Mm -hmm. And then if they kind of, had any questions at the time we would talk about that we would we would kind of get to the bottom of you know this is how I do it would yeah. that suit your style I mean for me we have um you know if I once the design is out the door and we're sending it to the client it's a it's a case of within 24 hours maximum 48 hours we expect a feedback response now mm -hmm. if that's going to get delayed then they that's fine but they must understand that their timeline is then going to get delayed and that's going to cause an impact on when they want to go live so yep. if they want to stick timelines we've put in place then they've got to kind of meet the deadlines that we set at every given stage mm -hmm. that's not to say that you know there's no wiggle room because we allow for the wiggle room um but we just we just make sure that you know they're fully aware at every single stage that if anything slips or if we're ahead we can pull things forward and we can launch a little bit earlier and we've got those yeah. steps in place to kind of support them to help them as well as just keep everything on track yeah um, yeah, you can't meet expectations you haven't set. So <laughs> exactly, set. and I yeah. and I think I think that's really key as well. It is about setting expectations and managing those expectations as well. Because if you if you can set them, but if you don't manage them at the same time, it mm -hmm. becomes a really loose kind of you know you set this goal, you set this deadline, but at the same time, if you don't continually manage it and say, look, we are going to lose that, we're going to lose a little bit of time here because we've overrun and are you okay with pushing it back for a week? I mean, COVID is a great example of like, you know, setting those and managing expectations because we had projects that went through COVID and obviously when everything went into lockdown, everyone had their families at home. So you can't expect everyone to be working nine till five or nine till three or whatever your hours are and mm. ignore normal life as you would see because business had, took a hit in that right yeah mm -hmm. so being able to kind of converse with the clients and converse with my clients and say look this is this is a change in routine for us which means it's going to have an impact on the project but let's work it out together so being really specific when we when we um had lockdown and we all went into lockdown in the uk i had both my kids at home and my husband at home like most families everyone was mm -hmm. under the same roof um, and my husband's a nine to five, I work in the corporate world. So it naturally became, I have to do the juggle yeah. between like what time, you know, I'm going to start work and what time I'll finish. So my hours mm -hmm. became four o'clock in the afternoon until midnight. And then in the, like all day I'd have the kids working at four o'clock till midnight mm -hmm. and just find the energy to kind of do the work in those times, but also manage my clients and say, look, I'm really sorry. I'm not going to be working at 10 o'clock in the morning because I've got two kids running around and yeah. it's madness. I'm homeschooling one of them. And the other one's like a Tasmanian devil running through the rooms, <laughs> ripping everything apart. So it has to be at four o'clock. And that's when you'll hear from me. And yeah. because I put that in place, they understood. And it wasn't a case of they're just waiting and hanging around, waiting for me to kind of let them know. And it was a scrambling mess. Mm -hmm. Um and it's that communication, it's the it's the transparency and letting them know what's actually happening in your life, in real life. Um, because at the end of the day, we're all human. It's going to happen to us. It's going to happen to them. And that's mm -hmm. that's that's taking it into grand scale of a pandemic. I mean, even if you're ill, you can still mm -hmm. tell your clients you're not available and manage it, right? So, yeah. yeah. I think wow. I went off one there, <laughs> <laughs> no it's a good one and i was i was absorbing it and taking it in for my younger self so if my younger self is out there listening this one is for you um is that <laughs> yeah. you know your your clients are human too they understand they empathize um it's okay to uh to be transparent in in what's going on constantly um That's it. Awesome. So you also mentioned something that that I think is uh, a great takeaway for our listeners, and that is you you wrote a blog post every day. I mean, every week for 18 months, which is something I've, I've heard from other guests on the show. And that uh, there was once upon a time I was doing something similar to it. It's a once upon a time thing, but um, yeah. it serves as a great foundation for for building trust and demonstrating your expertise and if you're not doing that in some way, at least at some point in time, you're, you're missing out on that potential uh, 
you know, value add to your clients. It doesn't have to be a blog. It could be, I mean, now there's way more uh, media channels. Um, yeah, you know, yeah. it could be a YouTube channel. Um, it, it could be purely audio. Maybe there's a way that, you know, you, you deliver your message with just audio. Um, there's so many different ways to capture, document uh, what you're doing, how you're doing it in a way that benefits uh, potential clients, current clients, old clients, you know, yeah. um, other designers, other developers. Uh, actually, yeah. Uh, sorry to interrupt, but even on that point, a lot of it is also, if you don't know something yourself, you can actually learn it and document that. Mm -hmm. So one of the very, very early things I used to do was, you know, I would, if I didn't know how I was creating a particular design, if I didn't know what pointers I need to look at to integrate onto a homepage, for example, so if I'm thinking about a very specific design that I want to create, if I didn't know how to do it, I would backtrack and like I would write down the steps that I've done mm -hmm. to learn that particular thing and then mm -hmm. I would turn that into a blog post and then it became not only as a reference point for me but it became a learning point for others plus it became almost like I processed I'd written down my process for that particular thing so I could refer back to it for me mm -hmm. and for anyone else who wanted to learn so it's almost like I was able to minimize repetition and mm -hmm. create a system in that as well yeah, yeah. so it, it just streamlined a lot of things. It, it just seemed like a beneficial thing to do for everyone, yeah. everyone involved, even the people who didn't know. <laughs> yeah, it's like having a, a catalog of operating procedures, yeah, SOPs. Like yeah. your 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 blog is a potentially you know SOPs for yourself. And I I my in my opinion, anything you create within your business that helps to to improve your business is a potential asset for someone else Absolutely. in a similar business. Um, so those are really great value adds. Um, Krishna, is there anything uh, that you would want to add uh, specifically for our audience, maybe things that you have going on or um, our UK listeners specifically? I'm just throwing stuff out there. Yeah, I mean, I love how that, that's just, you know, you just sprung it on me, but I love it. <laughs> um, and yes. I mean, I am constantly looking to network and find UK Squarespace website designers and developers. I mean, I know that there are loads out there, mm -hmm. but it, I think that there are also a lot that are very introverted who don't necessarily want to step outside of their comforts, but I would want to meet them. I'd want to kind of connect with them. I want to know who they are. I want to see if we can at some point have a face-to-face -face meeting and build mm -hmm. like that UK base up because mm -hmm. I know that I think next week there's the first UK Squarespace meetup in London okay. and I'm absolutely gutted that I missed the sale I missed getting my ticket because oh. I was I was they, they, I know they hit the inboxes in the UK yeah uh, like at, at such a time that by the time that I checked my email and I'm talking mm -hmm. within hours they'd yeah. all sold out they'd all gone so well, I missed them that's a good them. sign yeah it is a good sign, but it makes me think, where are they all hiding? Because I right. need to know where they are, so I can kind yeah. of say hello to them. So yep. if there's anyone out there who's listening, please feel free to reach out, drop me an email, get in touch via the website in any form. I'm on I'm on mainly Instagram as Krishna Solanke Designs. I'm on LinkedIn, same Krishna Solanke Designs, and my email is really long. It's mm -hmm. hello at krishnasolankedesigns.com. But if there are listeners and they want to get in touch, I'd love to kind of just connect with them and say hello so yeah. yeah you heard that you heard it here first um <laughs> yeah no I, I can definitely attest to just I mean this this podcast it serves that benefit for me as well as I get to get to know y'all and, and learn from you um and uh the the meetups that we have over here sometimes in New York like it's it it really it makes you feel less alone and because if yeah. you're just doing Squarespace websites you could possibly feel like you're the only one in your world yeah. doing it um but it definitely uh i've gotten ideas i've gotten just so much uh value from this community uh wherever wherever squarespace designers show up um i've, yeah. I've gotten some out of that so krishna thank you for for sharing thank you for your story um i i've gotten a lot out of uh, what you shared and it's kind of affirmed a part of myself as well so um, thanks for that. And uh, for our listeners, we'll see you in the next episode.
Bye. Nice. Thank you. Thanks for having me. It's been a pleasure speaking with you and yeah, learning lots of things from you as well. So thank you. You're welcome, Krishna. Take care. Take care.